Lysithia, do you have a moment? There is a matter of significance I'd like to discuss with you. I know you're always seeking the attention of ladies, but why are you wasting your breath on me? Don't be silly. I want to discuss the future of the Alliance, to have a constructive and candid exchange of opinion. I'm not so sure I'm the one being silly. Actually, I'm busy. Stuff to do. Now, hold on just a moment. House Ordelia will never benefit from such a narrow-minded mentality. Irony! I was under the impression you were interested in me as a person. What do house matters have to do with anything? As it stands, the bonds between Alliance Lords are quite weak. If this state of affairs persists, I'm afraid those bonds may dissolve entirely. I couldn't care less. Ooh, let's go, like in there! House Ordelia may be small, but a small house is fettered by fewer obligations than a larger one. Apply yourselves actively in diplomacy, negotiate wisely, and you could do much to help maintain peace among the neighboring lords. The recognition of those lords would benefit your house immensely. To that end, why not start with me, the heir to House Gloucester? It couldn't hurt for us to become friends, could it? Yes, yes, of course, when the time comes. But right now, I'm quite busy. Maybe later. As it is, I'm studying magic for the benefit of the Alliance, and I would appreciate it if you left me to it. Ah, I see. Then forgive the intrusion. I will take my leave of you for now. But if there is any way I can be of help to you or your house, I hope that you won't hesitate to ask. After all, as I'm sure you know, the future of the Alliance is my responsibility. <laughs> <sighs> the future, he says. Hm. As though I have a future. Right. I can see why she's not entirely uh, concerned with those sorts of things if she's expecting to have a short lifespan because of her uh, condition. Hello, Marianne. You're well, I hope. I am, Lawrence. Thank you. I cannot help but notice you do not look it. Is that so? I feel fine. Hmm. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, when opposites attract. <laughs> was there something you needed? Uh, how unseemly of me. My apologies. It is not my intention to stare. Does something about me seem... off? Oh, not at all. I was just remembering your father, or rather, comparing my experience of him to you. Your father, Margrave Edmund. He is one of the shrewdest nobles in all the Alliance, with a noted gift for pointed speech. On and beyond the battlefield, his words have the power to move friend and foe alike. My own father has said he would not want to make an enemy of him. Naturally, I am of the same mind. Your father is blessed with gifts of confidence and eloquence. Yet compared to him, you seem always reticent and downcast. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cause you discomfort. It's just that the contrast between you and your father is striking. I have very little in common with my adoptive father. But he sent you to Garrick Mock. Clearly, he sees potential in you. I think I see it too. Yes, a certain charm, gravitas, if you will. Just like him. Oh. Wait, was that supposed to be her smiling? I can't say that I know too much about him. I should be going now. Y yes, y yes, of course. Please, take care. Oh, such grace, such serenity. How could such a beauty be hiding in plain sight? With a little polish, she would shine magnificently. <sighs> when opposites... I want to say attract, but really it's just one side attracting. One person who doesn't want to talk and doesn't want to talk about themselves, and the other person who only wants to talk and only wants to talk about themselves. Yay! Yes! Time for food! Hey, Ignatz! Is this seat taken? Oh, hey, Raphael. I'm done eating, so you can sit here if you like. Really? But there's still food on your plate. 
Uh, it's fine. I'm not that hungry. Anyway, I guess I'll be heading off. Oh. Okay. Hey, Ignatz! Wanna train with me? Uh, oh my! That equipment's looking rusty. Let me fetch some oil. <laughs> What's the matter? It always looks like that. Come on. We'll take care of it later. So, another case of opposites attracting, in a way. No, you have to do it as soon as you notice. There's oil in the warehouse. I'll be right back. Hey, Ignatz! Uh, hello, Raphael. Are you busy? I need to talk to you. No, uh, that's... Oh, almost forgot. It's time to return this book to the library. I'll just... Hey, hey, hey. Hold up. Are you seriously going to keep running away from me? What? No, I'm not running. Yes, you are. Every time I try to talk to you, you make up some excuse and run. What's going on? You were a lot friendlier to me when we were kids. You were always so excited to show me all the neat stuff you had whenever I came to visit. We'd play hide-and-seek with my little sis, draw pictures, and do other fun stuff too. Remember all that? Things... can't be the way they were. It's regrettable, but it's the truth. Regrettable? What's there to regret? I mean... you know... what happened to your parents. My parents are the reason your parents died. Ah, uh, so it's going to be like Petra and Caspar. To an extent, but they knew each other before. What are you talking about? My parents died in an accident while traveling for work. Maybe so, but they were taking over for mine. Because they had other business that day and couldn't go themselves. So, they recommended yours to fill in for them. Huh. I didn't know that. But, what does that have to do with our friendship? No, but see, I... Oh, I see. But we're done talking about this. You gotta stop beating yourself up over it. It was an accident. He's just putting on a brave face. No one is that forgiving. Like, I actually get Casper and Petra's a whole, like, like, animosity towards each other. They didn't know each other. It was completely intentional for the kill. The other one's lording around having a lot of success afterwards. Uh, theirs had a lot more attention to it. This one just sounds like Ignatz is just like really getting insecure about something he probably shouldn't. Hey, Marianne, what's she in? Mind if I join you? I'm starving. Uh huh? Oh, um. All my favorite dishes are on the menu today. I might have grabbed too much. You want some? No, thanks. I... All you've got on your plate are leaves! Are you sure that'll fill you up? I I'm done eating now. I have to go. Huh? You're already done eating? But there's still food on your plate! Hey, Marianne! Huh. Maybe she's not feeling well. I should probably go check on her later. Oh, is that so? I'm so happy you found all of that food. A little gray starling told me that you can find berries if you fly out toward the mountains. Oh, I found Marianne. I don't know if she spent her time here. It sounds like she's talking to someone. To an animal, yes. Can she actually talk to animals? I haven't seen anything else suggesting this outside of her just liking animals. Huh. What's that? You want to try some nectar from the flowers in the greenhouse? That might be tricky. I guess you could try it if I'm already there. Otherwise, you might get locked in. Hey, Marianne! Who are you talking to? <gasps> How did he sneak up on you? Huh? Oh, the birdie flew off. I yes, it looks like he has. What are you doing here, Raphael? You were acting a little strange when we were eating earlier, so I wanted to check on you. I was worried. Uh, that's sweet of you, but I'm fine. Are you sure? Well, that's good to hear. As long as... Wait a minute! Were you just talking to a bird? Excuse me? <laughs> oh, that's like a bit. <laughs> I knew it! You can talk to birds! I'm right, aren't I? Uh, um... Yes. 
That's incredible! This place is full of interesting folks, but I didn't think anyone spoke birdie. No, that's not it. This bird just happened to be speaking human. No, that's... Oh Amazing! I hope I get to meet a bird who speaks human one day. Yeah, know what? I think she's probably just putting words in the animals' mouths. And she probably has a good intuition for what they really like, so it's fairly accurate. Uh, but she's probably doing that as a replacement for actually talking to people. Uh, at least that makes sense to me. She has a lot of issues, doesn't she? Right. Then this goes here. Just stuff that needs to get worked through, obviously, but you know. Quite a few. She doesn't want to open up about them either, so they've probably been piling up for a long time now. Hello, Raphael. What exactly are you doing with that piece of wood? Hey, Hilda. I'm just doing this. With your bare hands. Impressive that just the outer ring is left. It makes quite a nice circle. Yeah. I just gotta polish it up and paint it. Then the base of the necklace will be ready. Sorry, did you say necklace? How's it look? I bet it's the right size, too. And this tree bark smells amazing. Now I just need to carve these boar tusks to hang from it. Boar tusks? I almost forgot. I was going to add these wolf claws, too. And I could even add some color to them. And wolf claws? Huh? Is something wrong, Hilda? That necklace! It has a certain, uh, rustic charm? You're right. It really does. Want me to make you one while I'm at it? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Besides, I think it would look better on you than on me. <laughs> the amount of just, like, almost complete opposite people. Like, even when you get to, like, someone in this Golden Deer house, that's like, they have similar things. Like, they like to talk of quite a bit. Then you have something else that makes them completely different. It would definitely look good on me. But this one's actually a birthday present for my little sis. For your sister? I mean, uh, uh, don't you think she might like something more feminine? Something cute? Something cute? What's wrong with something tough and rugged? This necklace is gonna have tusks and claws and stuff. But girls don't usually go for tusks and claws and stuff. There should be flowers or gems or... Here, I, I can talk you through it. If you're making a necklace for your sister, you might try putting a pretty little flower in a small crystal bottle and sealing it with resin. If you say so. But where would I find a flower that was pretty enough? Oh, honestly, I don't know much about flowers. But, hmm, now that I think about it... I remember hearing about a splendid flower that only blooms near Fodlin's throat. Fodlin's throat? That's on the eastern edge of the Alliance. I'd have to leave now if I'm going to make it back in time. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like a bit of a stretch. Okay, let me think. Um, where'd he go? Well, no matter. And, uh, appropriately, that's the last support for Raphael today. Yes, it is. <laughs> Wow, I have a fucking ton of these that are built up. Good morning, Lysithia. Out for a stroll, are we? It's lovely weather for it. I might go wander outside myself. I'm sure I can see some beautiful sights. Ignatz, hold still, will you? Uh, sure. Your shoes are untied. It looks sloppy. Let me just fix it for you. Oh, thank you for letting me know. But really, I'm perfectly capable of tying them myself. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Clearly that's not the case. Otherwise, this wouldn't be an issue. Now, hush. I feel like agreeing with Lysithia here. <laughs> um... There we go. Thanks. You've also got awful bedhead. What? But I examined myself in the mirror before leaving my quarters. It's the back of your head. Quite unkempt. You really should get it together. I mean, really. You're born to a noble adjacent merchant family, aren't you? You really should be more presentable. Sorry, Lysithia. You're always so perfectly put together. 
In fact, I'd say you're perfect in all respects. I don't think I've seen you fail at anything. Well, consider that if I make even the slightest misstep, everyone will treat me like a child. There's nothing I hate more than that. I see. Well, I think you're very mature. If anything, you may be overdoing it somewhat. I mean, people treat me like a child sometimes. But I like it, because it reminds me that other people care about me. You know? No matter how much we stretch, some things are always beyond us. I think it's fine to be vulnerable and ask for help sometimes. Ignatz, are you really lecturing me about how I conduct <laughs> myself right now? Oh, wow. You're a sheepish, unreliable scatterbrain who can only ever think about what others think of him. What? Perhaps you should worry about your own maturity before you start questioning mine. Although you certainly look the part of a baby, so maybe that's asking too much. Anyway, I've got things to do, so I'm gonna go now. Uh, Lysithia, wait. wait. Hey! <laughs> Is this more like the case of, like, someone who... Like a girl who has a crush on the uh, on the guy, so she starts picking on him? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen her this mean. Out of my way! You're such a child, I swear! Or may maybe it has something to do with that. I was uncalled for. After all, I am older than she is. I haven't checked the people's ages in this, so I'm not sure. That's a fair question. Seventeen! He does not look seventeen. I'll give him that. Interesting. Oh, Professor, here's the map you... Oh, boy. Well, it's always next time, I suppose. <coughs> Just wait if you're that. Hey, Ignatz, didn't you have something to talk to the Professor about? Oh, no, nothing urgent. You didn't cut short your conversation because of me, did you? Come on, do I seem like the type to do that? No, I just had a couple of questions about the bows. We're done now, so I thought I'd come and tell you. The bows? Is something wrong with them? Lots of them have come in for repairs lately, so I switched out some of the strings for stronger ones. They've been breaking less, but now they're harder to draw. Ah, I see. I suppose people would prefer if you went back to the lighter bow strings. Maybe. If the only issue was the draw weight, I'd just tell people to get stronger arms. But the real problem is that you can't shoot as fast. The arrows also fly too far now. I can see how slower shooting is a drawback, but... The arrow's flying farther, that <coughs> actually sounds like a good thing. Sure, on open plains, but up close you lose accuracy. That's why I thought it might be good to use different bowstrings for different scenarios. I wanted the professor's opinion about that. Oh, good point. You know a lot about bows, don't you? Guess I do. I grew up in a hunting village, so I've been around them my whole life. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily better than anyone, but at least I know what I'm doing. And you, do you have something you're really good at? Me? Oh no, I, I don't think so. Well, I'm sure you'll find your thing someday. I hope so. Yeah. That was simple. Well... Yeah, I, I guess that is the big thing for, uh... That is the big uh, thing for Ignatz. He just doesn't have direction in life. Sort of throwing himself at whatever seems maybe... That makes sense. Uh, I... I think I'm gonna pass out. Ah! Whoa, Lysithia? You're really pale. Yeah, I've been feeling really queasy all morning. I'm just heading back to my quarters to rest. Can you even make it there in that state? Here, climb on my back. I'll carry you. What? What? No, no. I'm not some sort of... infant. Always worried about looking like a kid. No time for that now, just get on. <sighs> I'm feeling a bit better now. I should be okay from here. Thank you so much, Leonie. I hope I wasn't too heavy. Was I? <laughs> no, not at all. I actually made for a fun bit of training. Uh, training? You weren't too heavy, you were the perfect way for it to be training. 
so you're heavy than you pro uh, than you probably want to be. Yeah, carrying someone around is good for the legs. You're just the right weight for it too. I might ask you to help me train again sometime. Anything can be a kind of training with the right attitude, you know? Are you always thinking about training? Well, I can't devote all my time purely to training, so it's more efficient if I can train while I get other stuff done at the same time. Wouldn't that actually be rather inefficient? Huh? What do you mean? Well, for example, if you're training for endurance, it seems running would be a better approach. If you're only ever training by cramming it in with other tasks, you won't be getting the best results. I'm no expert on the subject, but even I can logic that one out. Well, you won't get the best results for training, probably, since you're not being as efficient for the training specifically. But you'll be more efficient overall. Like, you'll go 80% of the training, but you get overall 50% uh, 50 more done than you would otherwise. Come to think of it, you do always seem to stick to a pretty rigid schedule, don't you? I've noticed that you focus completely on whatever it is you've set out to do. Then you switch to something else and focus completely on that. You've noticed, have you? Now that I think about it, you may be right. Maybe that is the more efficient way to do things. Hey, you're really bright, Lysithia. Thanks so much for the helpful advice. Yeah, it's uh, another good way to go about it. That was sweet of Leonie to check on me and carry me all the way to my quarters. And in the end, I just lectured her. She did thank me for it, but uh, I probably could have handled that better. No objections there. Depends what you want to get out of it. Did you want to call her a child? Because that's always on the table. Woo! Why do I have to clean the library? Oh, don't blame her. She obviously didn't. It looks like you're not busy. I was quite busy sampling pastries, I'll have you know. So not busy. Definitely not busy. Who wants to sort books anyway? They're so bulky and heavy, it takes forever to lug them around. Right, Marianne? You agree with me, right? N no I don't mind it. Oh, you like cleaning then? I will say you look like someone who'd be good at it. I, um, well... In that case, it's all yours. I'd only slow you down if I'm being honest. Oh. As I always say, if you want something done right, let someone else do it themselves. Um... <sighs> yeah, 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 she's definitely on the lazy side. So much for only doing it when people offer. Right, I'm off to run some errands. I'll leave all this in your capable hands. Oh my goodness. She's not gonna argue back either. Hey, Marianne, are you? Whoa, what happened? This place looks even worse than before. I didn't realize that was possible. I'm sorry, Hilda. I just didn't know the best way to organize the books while sorting. Oh, well, no way around it, I suppose. I'll show you how it's done. First, you have to decide where you'll put each topic. Then, all of the books that don't match that topic, remove them from the section. When you remove them, you need a temporary place to put them. Let's put books on magic here, books on swordsmanship here. Once you've done that, you just put the books back in their sections, like so. Wow, Hilda, that was incredible. Yeah, yeah, what kind praise. Looks like in the end, I'm doing this whole thing on my own, hmm? Sorry. The least I can do is help you put them back on the shelf. And somehow that ends up going horribly as well. <laughs> Looks like most of the guys are uh, near the... Most most everyone's getting to see at this point. <sighs> Why do I have to organize the library? This is a consistent theme, isn't it? I'll get in trouble if it's not done, and I can't think of anyone who'd do it for me. 
Since no one else is around, though, time for a little break. What are those sounds? Ha! Yeah! Yeah, hard to imagine these two getting along. Leone, always at it. How exhausting that must be. Hmm, what's this? Hey, what are you doing? That's mine. If you leave it lying on the ground, people will think it's trash. I usually wear it around my neck, but I put it down while I'm training so I don't get sweat all over it. Well, people won't know that, will they? You should have just left it in your room. It's a good luck charm. If I don't keep it close by, then what's the point? How stubborn of you. I will say it looks to be a very well-loved charm. Captain Gerald gave it to me when I was a kid. Oh my goodness. If it's that important to you, you should wash it. Then again, I suppose it is made of wood. What did he give you? Did he just like give you... It's made of wood. Is it an actual charm? Or is it just like, oh, uh, here's a branch. Please get rid of this or something. <gasps> gave me a charm. I'm going to make it into a necklace. <laughs> Have you considered coating it with resin? That would preserve it nicely. You could even accessorize it. Make it look cute. <laughs> Thanks. But Captain Gerald made it especially for me. I'd really rather keep it just as it is. Well, if that's how you feel, I won't argue with you. Me, personally, I'd choose a cute necklace over a dirty old charm any day. I'm sure you would. But Captain Gerald didn't treat me as some young girl. He treated me like a person who mattered an equal. He taught me everything. I don't want to forget his teachings, so I'm going to keep this charm just the way it is. Huh. What do you know? Okay. It's nice. Hey, Dad. How much time do you spend in this village with this person I never met? Who clearly would have had to have been old enough to remember all the stuff that I would have been around for quite some time. <sighs> Good old Papa Gerald. Ah, that doesn't feel good at all. Ugh, why did he have to punch me so hard? Hey, Caspar. Something the matter? Oh, uh, hi, Hilda. Yeah, I just got in a little fight. No big deal. Definitely won. Your face is all swollen. That looks painful. Come on, let's get you to the infirmary. No, no, that's really too much. Like, like I said, I'm fine. Don't argue. Just come along. You look ghoulish. Huh? Maybe it's worse than I thought. Oh, whatever. It can't hurt to have it looked at. There! That should do it. You'll be alright now. Great! Thanks, Hilda. I had no idea you were so good at this. I always tended to my big brother's wounds, so I have lots of experience. I'm curious, though. Why are you always getting into fights? You really got hurt. Surely it would have been better not to bother. It's not like I go looking for fights, and I'm not always the one who starts them. There are just a lot of guys in this world who won't listen to reason. Somebody's got to beat some sense into them. <sighs> like you? Hmm. So that's why you're always oh picking boy. fights. Why not ignore them, or ask someone else for help? Maybe that's how you'd handle it, but I can't just look the other way. How very gallant. But maybe you should try showing a little restraint. You really think that? Yes, I do. I don't think you can solve all your problems by throwing a few punches. The world's a big place. At this moment, all over Fodlin, countless people are in some kind of trouble. But they'll figure things out one way or another, even without you there. Try to hold back and see what happens. Maybe you'll be surprised. Whoa, 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 whoa. Besides, if you're always picking fights, you might get so badly injured that you can't protect me. Is she an optimist, or does she, act does she actually believe that it'll all just work out? Now that's a good point right there. I guess I could give this whole restraint thing a shot. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <sighs> that was my worst mistake yet. 
Why am I so clumsy all the time? The women laughed and forgave me, but... That's a good question. Oh, how am I supposed to face them now? Hey there, Annette. What's with the sour face? Everything okay? I don't think I've ever seen you look so miserable. Don't tease me like that, Caspar. <laughs> Can't you see I'm down? Sorry, sorry. Y you know I didn't mean it. Did something happen? You don't have to share if you don't want to, but I think talking it out might help. You might be right about that. Are you sure you don't mind? Not at all. Well, today they were short on staff in the dining hall, so I offered to help out, but I sort of messed up. Big. So the usual. Oh no. What happened? <laughs> oh my goodness. All the plates in the kitchen went flying through the air, and the pot started giving off this weird blue steam. What? Wow, sounds more like art than cooking to me. The people in the dining hall saw the chaos and started panicking, and then soldiers came running. Finally, Catherine appeared and shut everyone up with a slash of Thunderbrand. All I was trying to do was help out. But in the end, I just ended up making more work for everyone. I'm awful like that. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Accidents happen. It's not like you were trying to make a mess. I know. The women at the dining hall laughed and forgave me. But... Was anyone hurt? Well, no, but... Well, there you go! No need to dwell on it and keep moping around. You had a bad day, but I'm sure you'll do better tomorrow. You know what? You're right! I guess all I can do is try harder next time. Thanks, Kaspar. That really did help me feel better. I can't keep moping around. I've got to work on my cooking skills. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I can count on you to be my taste tester, right? Right. Uh, sure. Just as long as you're not making any new art projects. Oh, Kaspar. You should never have joined this class. Oh, not that I gave him much of a choice. Oh, snap. Let me get this straight. The stars aren't moving, but the ground we stand on is? Yep. We're on a big round thing that's always spinning. And that's why the stars seem to move through the sky. So, okay. So we're establishing that's how this world works. There's always the possibility it's actually a flat world, because we're obviously not necessarily on Earth itself. Is that not common knowledge? Uh, that's unfortunate. Hard to believe, isn't it? But it's true. I admit I'm having a difficult time wrapping my head around it. How is it you know these things anyway? If you were a noble, it would make sense that you'd have a formal education on all of this. In the village where I was born, there were people who studied the stars. They taught me. A village of stargazing folk, huh? Do tell. I've never heard of such a place. It's a very well-hidden village. It was a small settlement deep in the forest, where no one ever bothered us. I was born there, grew up there, but when I got older, I felt like I needed to see the world. I couldn't live my whole life in one place, you know? So I struck out on my own. I always knew you were an odd little bird, but your birthplace makes you a rare little bird. Yeah, well, pretty soon after leaving her nest, this rare little bird was put in a cage. I thought it might be some kind of punishment for leaving the forest. What the hell? You think that because you wanted to live your life, you'd be punished? That's ridiculous. Depends. I'm getting the feeling she probably doesn't believe in Saros and that whole religion, so I wonder what she does believe. Look at this objectively. Was it punishment? Or was it just plain bad luck? There's nothing wrong with wanting to see the world and expand your horizons. Take me. Had I never left that gutter I call home, I'd have gone my whole life never learning how to look at the stars. Yeah. I left my village because I thought I'd find a better life beyond the forest. Now, I'm not so sure. Regret is pointless. What matters is how we live right here, right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that sentiment. Do you ever want to return back home? I could say no, but I'd be lying. I've been feeling homesick lately. Nothing happened there, for better or worse. There wasn't much to be scared of. Everyone said the outside world was dangerous, that beyond the forest, all we'd find was an early grave. 
that wasn't exactly true, but my life was for sure easier when I lived there. I used to spend my days fishing, hunting for pretty flowers, running around for no reason. A rare occurrence indeed. What is? Seeing you smile in that way. You're always so... I don't know. Neutral? That's not true. I smile when there's something to smile about. It's strange, though. When I'm talking to you, I can't help but let my guard down. I don't like to discuss where I came from. But with you, I feel like I can open up. You know, I've been thinking a lot about my mom and dad lately. I wonder... Are they even alive? Well, do they have a reason to not be alive? Something happened to them? I think they came after you? Ooh, you do have me curious. <clears throat> you do have me curious. Mm, I'm pretty sure at the end of Cinder Shadow, she was intending to go back home, right? So, uh, I'm going to call that for the day. I think I'm going to get in a bit of a bit of a pace when recording these to get up to the next mission, stop, do the mission, get up to the next mission, etc. So, uh, no idea where this is episode-wise, still recording a ton ahead, so it is what it is. Overall, I... It's not much different at this point. It's certainly interesting to see the Golden Deer students and all these other uh, characters that I hadn't really used interact with each other. And Claude's perspective on stuff seems interesting. I'm more curious about what's going on with him than anything else. I imagine his other home... <laughs> the things I've seen in the support probably have something to do with Almira. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe he grew up in uh, Almira. It would make sense. There is some sense to that. So, I will see you all next time. Drive safely, everyone. I can't say I have a plan for dealing with the Death Knight, but I'm definitely going to try to. Definitely gonna try to. The rite of rebirth is finally underway. Time to see if our hunch was right. Ugh, I hope it's not. Then we wouldn't have to fight anyone. Hmm. Oh, I don't think I'd say that. I don't think I'm gonna have a particularly religious person, regardless of my character. Hmm. We are mistaken. Nah. Imagining the background for a meal. Yeah, I probably have to do a lot of guesswork and basing strategy on some hunches. Our hunch is right. We've all come to this conclusion together. I'm sure we've got it right. Right or wrong, the clock is ticking. All we can do for now is stick to the plan. You seem a mite too relaxed for my liking. The goddess's right of rebirth is about to begin. While we are in the goddess tower, we are relying on you to secure the locations that are lacking in defense. May I let you in on something, Professor? My brother can be a bit... callous. He told me that he was concerned about you, and hinted that perhaps you would be better off patrolling a coffin. <laughs> Ooh. That was said in jest, Flame, and in confidence. Please just remain by my side and do not cause any more trouble. As a professor... Please excuse us, everyone. Sedith is way too overprotective. He reminds me of my brother. <laughs> oh. Come on, Teach. I know a hidden spot where we can monitor the stairs that lead to the Holy Mausoleum. If there's anyone down there, they'll be trapped like the rats they are. We'll just have to take them down without getting bitten. Okay. We know there's gonna be, so... Hilda seems like she really does... <laughs> doesn't like being associated with her brother <laughs> yet embraces it at other times at least it seemed like that in Cinder Shadows huh. yeah I really haven't been training in this enough and I have her in Myrmidon so it's like eh I'll have to do something else in order to get the Death Knight again I haven't really been planning for that I've been you know trying to work around everything else more so than planning for that. Our guess was spot on. Looks like we have company. And those central church... I'm on it. Looks like the enemy is going after the casket in the back. 
Maybe they're going after the Saints' bones? Weird. I'd like to defeat them before they can finish the job. But did you notice? Look closely at the ground. There's some... The smart move... Death Knight, prove your strength. I don't take commands or waste my... I'm getting a really disturbing vibe from that guy. No one go near the evil-looking knight, okay? Oh, 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 we'll see about that. Thanks. We'll see about that. Ah, this stinks. Such power dwells within. Could have been better, could have been worse. <laughs> Gotta keep improving. <laughs> Making my muscles proud. Is this power really mine? <laughs> Such power dwells within.
go back. I'm sorry, everyone. It was just too much. I got this. Put me in there. Ready and willing. I got this. We can handle that. Anytime. We got your back.
I didn't expect to encounter someone like you. How fortunate. Woo! Okay, that took a few divine pulses. I happen to have weapons on me that are I'm actually good started. against horses. Uh, it's a new game plus thing, obviously. And having good gambits. I'm getting it. Too. Took me quite a few divine pulses in order to get the RNG to work out. <laughs> I'm not even planning to use that. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, and I see that teleport. Oh well. I am still far from my best. I'm getting I think I've gotten stronger. You're too late. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I'm definitely tougher. Oh my goodness. It's like you're too late, Crit. Oh, yeah. Get it's no okay. use. A seal is broken. You can't huh? a sword. Yeah. Exact same as before, bar the slight change. Seeming like it. What? Still looks way too big. The handle itself just feels huge. Like a human bomb. And there we go. I'm trying to remember. Did I mention that I thought it, recording this sporadically means I forget what I've talked about before? Did I mention that I had the thought that maybe the idea was to steal it for Edelgard to try to use? Is the intruder here? Oh, looks like you have this under control. You, round up any stragglers. Yeah, we're all good. We'll do. Yeah. Spent a couple extra turns just trying to set up for the Death Knight stuff. Woo! Yep. Yeah, whatever I do, I can't just, like, ignore Sword of the Creator. Just because I'm going magic doesn't mean I'm not going to also go swords. <laughs> Basically. This concludes the investigation. Okay, Kalan's there this time. Interesting. I'm not surprised, but, you know. I suppose that's that. The assassination attempt, the attack on the Holy Mausoleum. Looks like it was all a plot by the Western Church. It's just too bad that that masked knight who was leading the attack got away. Vanished without a trace. But why would the Western Church want to attack Lady Rhea? Why? Take your pick of reasons. Relations with the Western Church aren't exactly friendly. For what reasons? I'm actually trying to remember. Oh, that's right. Gerald mentioned that you grew up completely isolated from the church. For good reason. The Church of Saros is split into a few different branches across Fodlan. The Central Church is headquartered right here at Garrick Mach. Then there's the Western Church. Far west from Castle Gaspar, where Lord Lanato had his little rebellion, is the fortress city of Aryan Road. Okay, but why aren't they friendly with each other again? It's the strongest fortress in the kingdom. On the other side of it is the headquarters of the Western Church. Not too smart to bicker with people who worship the same goddess as you. But why? 
The bishop of the Western Church must be pretty ambitious. Probably hopes to split off completely. That... In which case, he'd need to weaken the Central Church's influence. Killing Rhea is certainly one way to do that. To the shock of no one, I hear the knights have been sent to subdue the leaders of the Western Church. We'll probably get a chance to assist. You're an odd one, aren't you, Professor? How'd you make it this far in life without ever interacting with the Church? I can't believe someone like you exists in Fodlin. It's too strange. If you think that's weird, consider the fact that Rhea hired Teach despite all that. So those guys they caught, they all got the axe, right? That's brutal. Lady Rhea can be rather intimidating at times. In fact, she can be downright terrifying. Professor, those who cannot be saved must be delivered to the goddess for judgment. Is that not so? Yeah, you did seem like one of the f few people I've talked to that seemed like outright, like... Like, believed in it and, like, fell back on, like, the church's basically, like, scripture in order to deal with situations. There you are, Professor. It seems Lady Rhea would like a word with you. Come with me. Hmm. The Archbishop lives. We still never got any answers on what was the preceding, like, problems the Western Church had with, um, the Central Church, have we? Not that I had ever placed much faith. I have news. The remains of Seraph. However, something else was. The Sword of the Creator. Oh, 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 oh. So were we actually expecting the remains of Seraph? Or was Edelgard actually expecting the remains of Seraph? So let's take this in a new context. We know he's those this litter in the dark. Presumably the Flame Emperor. Probably reporting with the Death Knight Saul. Because, you know, everyone died, so he's the only informant of the information. Remains of the Seros. Maybe that's what those slitter in the dark told Edelgard to expect. Then again, they... Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well. Again, speculate... Like, there's, there is a lot in this game that I don't know if it's going to be answered later in one of the routes, but there is a lot of reading between the lines that you sort of have to do to try to understand, like, what people were even trying to do in certain situations. Her naked bear. I just... whatever. The sword of the creator, pulled right from the legends. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't remember... I don't remember anyone showing up after this before. I finally found it, and yet it ended up in Teach's hands. Could I even use it anyway? Ah, damn it. There's no telling what's to come. Were you going to try to use it? A basic understanding of how the crest stuff works in this. Uh, yeah, no. Do you th Ooh, does Claude think he's a descendant of Nemesis? Hmm. I wonder. Part one, white clouds. I must remind. Also, you should know that. The hey, Teach, you didn't forget, did you? That story I told you about a relic that could cut a mountain in half. Whoa, whoa, whoa! My bad. Uh, my bad. I sort of assumed it would go straight to Hanuman. Hey, Teach, I gotta say, I never would have guessed you were a descendant of the King of Liberation. You didn't forget, did you? That story I told you about a relic that could cut a mountain in half? That relic was the Sword of the Creator, the very same used by Nemesis, the King of Liberation. Interesting. Well... I won't rule out the possibility of being a descendant. I sort of feel like Rhea might have... Might have done something like found a, uh... Found a cast-off orphan in, like, maybe my mother or Geralt. I still don't know much about Geralt. Uh, maybe, maybe, like, my mother or something like that. And then proceeded to, like, manipulate her in order to, de uh, like, develop a child or something that 
she could imbue with what she wanted to do, basically. So, what are you talking about? I'm not ruling that out. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't be coy, Teach. The sword of the creator could only be wielded by Nemesis. If you can use it too, that can only mean you have that bloodline's crest. I don't understand. At this point, we don't know much about relics, do we? Fine. Keep your secrets. But just so you know, I don't understand isn't going to cut it here at the monastery. Is that how I said it? I don't understand. <laughs> oh. Speaking of, Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. He probably wants to examine your crest with those crazy instruments of his. Actually, sounds amusing. Maybe I'll tag along. If it isn't my little Claude. What has you so worked up? Oh! Judith, what are you doing here? Oh, I remember killing you. That's Lady Judith to you, boy. I told you, until you're in charge, I expect you to address me with all due respect. Anyway, I'm here to retrieve you. Duke Regan's condition has taken a turn for the worse. Are you saying the old man's on his deathbed? No, it's not that bad. But in the state he's in, he won't be able to participate in the next roundtable conference. He wants you to go in his stead. I volunteered to play the messenger. Well, thanks for that. Oh, and uh, Teach, this is Judith, also known as the hero of House Daphnel. So you're little Claude's teacher, are you? How much trouble has he been giving you? Uh, enough. Enough. Uh, plenty. If her nickname didn't give it away, you should know that Judith, uh, Lady Judith, is the leader of the famous House Daphnel of the Leicester Alliance. She used to be a big deal at the roundtable conferences, but it seems of late she's been reduced to a mere... You had better shut that mouth before I put my boot in it, you tactless nuisance. Now come on, let's get going. Ouch. Sorry, Professor, but I need to borrow the boy for a bit. I suppose we'll have to finish our chat later. Sorry, Teach. But don't you worry. I'll be back in time for our next mission. All right, Judith. Let's get going. It's Lady... Uh, I suppose you are the active leader for the time being. Fair enough, boy. Fair enough. Okay. Now we get to the... Good of you to come, Professor. Now we get to this. I've heard much about you lately. Well, it's good to know that they just have, like, sort of arbitrary cutscenes that they insert based on what route you're on. Here, you can have flowers. Oh, thank I'll, you. I'll get your hopes up for your birthday. I'm sorry. So, I'm starting to get to classes that are on. Yeah, um, I passed! My goodness. The base stats for this really don't have, like, a resistance one at all. Oh, boy. So, I'm getting into the classes that I'm feeling a need to actually master stuff for. So, I might spend a little of my time just, like, grinding a little bit of class mastery with, like, some... tactics, let's call them, in some of the, um, side adventures. Mind you, I'm not gonna, like, just, like, grind the entire thing, or just to supplement it, because chances are we'll, we'll get to the advanced class and we'll be like, mm, if only I had one or two more levels, or something like that. Just feels like that's inevitable. It's sort of just like that right now with these, even. I did it! A new path to tread. Thanks. Last. Oof. This wasn't the first time I've taken part in an Alliance Roundtable conference, but it was still exhausting. There's not enough cooperation in that group, especially from Lawrence's father. But at least my grandfather was surprisingly alert. 
Judging by that, I'd say he's got at least five more years in him. Well, that's awfully specific. <laughs> wow. Holy moly. Oh my. Oof. But at least my... Interesting. I'm pretty sure when I talked to you in the Black Eagles round, you were mentioning the uh, the Nemesis oh, yeah. stuff, so... Interesting. Not possible. Hey, Professor, did you happen to see that man I was looking for earlier? I just spotted him by the dining hall, but then he ran away. Is he running away from you? He... To be honest, he's my father. He's using a different name now, but there's no mistaking it. It's him. I know it is. Father, I found you at last. Oh my fucking goodness. Is Gilbert really a deadbeat dad to her? The fuck, man. The fuck. I should go fucking point my sword at him. Hello. I thought school life would be peaceful and quiet with a sprinkle of drama to keep things interesting. But since you arrived, it's been one thing after another. Is that just a coincidence, I wonder? It's a good question. I don't think me being here indicates much... Uh, would change much in what Edo Garden they're doing, uh, and them are doing, right? So, if a lot of that's instigated by the Pale People, then... What do you mean? She's resting, but it, hmm? she and I chair and she sm she died, but she is one day. Well done. You have my thanks. Yep. Oh, it has her name on it now. Citri Eisner. Okay. Wait, is that my last name too? Wait. Okay. Interesting. But she loved you with all. But she loved you. The glory of progress. I've eaten many meals in my time, but this is... Oh, have I maxed out professor level? Okay. Interesting. That looks dull. Well, at least there is a use for him, at least. <laughs> Funny, 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 funny. Cleaning my room. It's so boring, and to be honest, I'm kind of lazy. But I don't want my room to get messy. Who do you think I should get to tidy it up for me? <sighs> she wants it cleaned well, right? I'm a good teacher, though. I should be a good teacher. I could motivate her, though. Hmm. She probably. Eh, uh, you know what? <laughs> I I'm not so much uh, wanting to be a good, good teacher, more so I as I want to get the job done in this one at the moment. That's Emil's personality more so than what Echo's was. So I'm willing to pander, the pander to them a little bit more. I see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> even if that's the bad idea, Listen. apparently. People say my muscles make me a great war master. And I've got nothing against working my axe and brawling skills. What do you think, Professor? No. Not the moment. Marianne. Okay. I was wondering who had a support with me. Um, Professor? 
since I had one pop up. There's something I need to say. You... You want to talk to me? Yeah, I'm happy to listen. Thank you. How should I put this? I don't seem to be getting along with everyone. I don't contribute much either. Am I a nuisance to you, Professor? If so, I'll leave. Of course, my adoptive father may not understand, but if I must... Your adoptive father- wait, no, immediately say, no, you're not a nuisance. No, you're not. You're here to learn. There's a reason for that. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my adoptive father is one of the new nobles of the Alliance. His territory is to the north. He was a distant relative who took me in after my parents vanished. He's blessed with great drive and ambition. Some may go so far as to call it avarice. Vanished? What happened to your parents? He wishes to marry me off to a powerful noble. That's why he sent me to the academy. If I left now, I'm sure he'd have a strong opinion about it. Ah, oh, sorry. I strayed away from the topic. I'm not good at telling stories either. No, I understand, I understand. Ah, good. I'm glad. Yeah, it... <laughs> The thing about it is, ultimately, you need to explain the details, so... <laughs> Her feeling guilty about that's just weirder than anything. So, as I was saying, are you sure I'm not bothering you, Professor? You are no bother at all. Come on. Oh, I'm so grateful to hear you say that. What I'm trying to say is... You should keep your distance. I'm more trouble than I'm worth. <sighs> I will not agree to that. I'm a teacher. I'm here to do a job. Come on. Work with me. Come on. You only say that because you don't know the real me. I'm sorry. I have to go. Maybe you should let me... Ma Maybe you should let other people make that decision for themselves. What's the worst case? You get exactly what you expected. Ah, uh, whatever. Oh, sure. Hey, Yuri. <laughs> oh, boy. Now oh, this one's a bit of a... This one feels weird. You asked me here for a reason, yeah? Well, at the very least, this should be interesting. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's your birthday, so, I guess. That's a good enough reason. Hmm. Hmm? Um... <laughs> I don't even know. Heart racing seems more likely for him, since he seems, he seems like he likes to have fun. That's so. Uh, okay, maybe he's more practical when you get down to brass stacks. Hmm? I don't know. Hopes for your future. Yeah. Hmm? Things you find romantic. Um. You remember our first meeting? Yeah. It was exciting when he tried to kill us. <laughs> I suppose not for this one. Whatever. Cool. Thanks for the treat, friend. Let's do this again sometime, yeah? No problemo. <laughs> um. Did I? I'm trying to remember if I actually instructed him. Ah, uh, whatever. Hey friend, thanks for joining me when I had to deal with that mess a while ago. You were a real help. I wouldn't say you fully earned my trust, but you've earned something for sure. I owe you. Oh, right, when I basically forced myself along. Ah, yeah, sure, if you'd like. Whatever makes you happy. I would like. Open offer to share your desires. But if the price is too high, 
I reserve my right to refuse you. <sighs> what do I want from Yuri? What do I want from Yuri? Honestly, I don't know. Absolute control over the underworld to stage an attack on the church. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're in the middle of something just now. I was just rummaging through what we recovered from the scorpions, and I stumbled across something pretty special to me. Really? What's with the notebook? And why do they have it? It was under lock and key, so those thugs probably thought it was something of high value. The Elder gave it to me when I was small. Losing it really got me where it hurts. Back when you were a kid. I guess it couldn't hurt to tell you about it. Can't quite remember how old I was. But my mother had taken in an elderly man wandering the town. He was worse for wear. Could barely even walk. She nursed him back to health under a humble roof. In return for her kindly gesture, he taught me to read and write. This notebook is a relic of those times. Not too long after that, I came down with a terrible illness. We had no money to speak of, so a doctor's visit was out of the question. My mother went everywhere asking for help, to no avail. And then the Elder stepped in and saved me. I don't know how he did it, or what it was he did. Maybe he was a doctor? Hmm... I suppose you'd get more answers out of, like, what happened to him. After the fact, did he, like, leave, or...? Long since passed on. Natural causes. I believe it happened shortly after he cured me. My illness, it turns out, was part of a larger plague that swept through our village. So many died. And there I was, having escaped death by some strange luck. I felt grateful. And helpless. So little Yuri figured it would be his mission to help anyone he could as he grew up. And how do you go about a, uh, giving that help? However I could. Not necessarily by making gold rain from the sky, but in smaller ways. The streets are filled with kids who have no homes, no food, so many dying of disease, or some cheap medicine would have saved them. I figure... If I can save even one unlucky soul, well, then I'm doing my part, you know? It's a small dream, but it's one I hold in my heart. To help those who need it. It's what my gang's about. When I recruit my people, it's to that end. To give them a home. The turf wars, the gang, all of it. To honor that dream. Let's see, how would uh, how would Emil here react, though? I, I would say, personally, it's definitely on the Admiral's side, if a little... maybe unrealistic. Then again, aiming for the unrealistic is the entire point. He's probably not the trusting type, so... Just how honest are you being? Wouldn't you like to know? Despite all I've done, I have my own honor. I don't lie to someone if I owe them. I do what I have to, whether people view it as fair or foul. The way I see things, the goddess gave me two gifts. My life and my charm. That's been gift enough to get in with slimy nobles, so I can pull their strings as I see fit. <laughs> uh, you're in their good graces, though. Did he stay in their good graces? Of course. It wasn't always easy, but in the end, it's all the same little game. Once I used a clever name, and my charms, to become the attendant to the head slug of a noble house. Yet another time, I took a name befitting the kingdom that landed me in the academy as a noble's adopted son. That's how I've gotten this far and earned my fortune. In doing so, I've spread my wings of protection further, to help those who need it most. Huh. So, actually, yeah, wait. Is your current name fake? <laughs> As though I tell you, friend. But perhaps you can share what it is you think, hmm? Hmm. I never asked you what your name was in a time where, uh, you owed me something, so... Time will tell, I guess. 
Let's do this. Yeah. We did good out there. Experience is everything. I think I've got the hang of it. Hmm, I see. It's starting to make sense. Not as hard as I thought. <laughs> I'm getting better at this. Bye.